everybody thanks for watching and just a quick reminder ancient history volume 5 is now available as well as mystery school volume 6 definitely check those out so now you know we had the election come and go and many people getting into the whole conflict of voting or not voting stuff i touched about on uh you know facebook and um instagram and got into a pretty good you know debate on that topic and really you still have a lot of people talking about the subject and a lot of people having questions about what should we do you know how do we get our foot in the positions of government and rise to a point where we can actually do something to help our people out if we don't vote you know if we don't vote people in how are we gonna you know do anything to change our situation and this is due to a lot of you know misconceptions and ignorance uh you know on a lot of people's part not really understanding how things work especially in the world of politics so one you got to remember we've been voting for a long time we fought hard to vote and it's one of the reasons why segregation you know you know desegregation had to happen because anytime you have a people that's willing to be beaten and you know killed for their right to do something vote this this is a powerful people this is the people you have to stop and it's not going to be by force so it was psychological and um desegregation was a major part of it and getting people to basically forget you know us as a whole us being united as black people and having this common goal we was together and it was about you know black power and fighting against the evil white man until they said okay you can basically come live where we live you can do what we do and we was like oh and we forgot about you know who we are we forgot about that bond that you know the unity in exchange for trying to fit in and this is basically you know what took place during that part but you know getting into the voting part and understanding how that works and remembering one we had elected to the highest the so-called highest seat in office black president we'll get them much better than that people came out voted we got obama elected not once but twice he did absolutely nothing that should be enough for people right there that we got that one shot to finally put a black looking face in the highest seat possible the top job in america in the world people would say being an american president nothing for us except as i said we seen more black people killed during the obama administration more black people killed by cops during his two terms than black people was killed by cops in the 50s 60s and 70s combined and you got to think about that he did nothing more was done to support gay and lesbian and LGBT rights than innocent black people with a black president being in office. So voting is like, if you didn't know then, you should know by now. Now too, do you honestly believe it's going to be that easy for us to, you know, trust the process <laughs> to vote a black person in or vote black people in to positions within government that they could actually do something that's going to benefit black people as a whole and allow us to surpass white America in wealth and power. Do you think everything these people have done over the last few hundred years, they would allow this to happen because of some votes? <laughs> I mean, come on. As people are not really being practical when they ask these questions and, and people forgetting you know history and forgetting who we're talking about here and, and the power these people have and what they're willing to do to keep it now more than that you have to just simply look at the fact that one you have these corporations running the government these same people that are in positions of power within government own some of the major corporations or have pieces friends who own some of the most powerful corporations in america and the world these people have special interest groups to help with their special interests to do things you know that's going to keep them in power keep us out of power suppressed oppressed plain and simple 
So the fact that you've got these major corporations that can contribute billions of dollars to keep their interests at the highest point in government, to keep their interests heard and, and keep their agenda gone. What do we have that can rival that to benefit the black interest? What black people want? Point to it. It's nothing. So your rich black folks your entertainers and athletes are owned by who? Them. So, come on. So you honestly think you're going to vote and somehow magically everything is going to change for us. So again, to answer that question, I understand it's a legitimate question to, to, to basically have and to ask, you know, if we're going to move up somewhere in power in this government, shouldn't we vote? And the answer is still no. Because they're not going to let that happen. This is chess. Again, it's strategic. And to even qualify, to even get into the game, one, we got to have the economic power to make the moves. We don't have that. So we're basically at the lowest point. And you have to, you have to couple that with society and how we look at things. You have homeless. This is where we are at on a political scale. Homeless. You have the homeless, you have the poor, you have, you know, lower middle class, middle class, upper middle class, rich, wealthy, so on and so forth. We are poor, homeless at the lowest point. This is where we are as a people, as far as being on that scale of, you know, implementing any kind of real economics, you know, as a people. We're homeless. So we can't, we're not going to be heard, just like we don't listen to them homeless people on the street. What do we get as, you know, black people in this society? Handouts, benefits, food stamps. Here you go, poor people, homeless people, we take the food stamps. Okay, you can do little odd jobs here and there to make some money, don't give you minimum wage. It's the same type of situation you see from homeless people. You get food, crumbs. You know, you got to go dig in the trash, work hard and, you know, break your back to to get enough. Collect, you know, 100,000 cans just to get $100. You know, we are at that level. So in order for homeless people to do anything, when you think about it, they should come together and figure a way out. Same thing with us, but we don't do that. They don't do that. You know, it's a mindset. So to get to that point to where we can even begin to try to put somebody in the seat of power and the seat of power, which we won't go that route anyway. But if we were to try to, we don't have the money and the back end to push him up there. We don't have the corporations and the companies to basically have, you know, special interests and to control lobbyists to go and lobby for what we want as a people. We don't have that. It's non-existent. And it's like people are still not getting this. So what they have effectively done, again, is okay one you got to contemplate since we all agree oppression is going on we agree on that we agree that they have weapons and they're doing things and implementing things that's keeping black people back since we all agree on that you have to then ask yourself well wouldn't one of the weapons be to make sure to ensure one of the things that has to be crucial to their plan is to make sure black people do not support their own Plain and simple. So what they have done effectively is they basically have created an emotion for hate. Plain and simple. And I mean that in the sense as we as black people have an emotion when it comes to the success of our people and how we how we observe it, how we deal with it. It's a hate emotion to where now, you know, not supporting black people it's like a feeling when you see a black person doing good it's a feeling that comes over you uh, of you don't want that you know of hate some type of emotion it's like what the hell is that why do i feel some type of way about this person being successful and we don't we can't even fathom it. it's just you got hate plain and simple you don't you don't like to see it and you couple that with uh culture this hip-hop culture of these rich black people teasing that's about the stuff they you know what they have I got cars, I got clothes, you couple that. And it's an emotion that has been created within us when we see black success. 
that we don't want to support it. Not everybody has it, of course, but majority of black folks do. And of course, they would have to ensure that exists. Because if we had the level of unity that we had back in the 60s, 50s, or what have you, today when we are doing well and, and having more money and more buying power as the people, then we would choose to spend the money with our own people and we would basically be on top. So it is imperative, it is important that they create that emotion of hate and that emotion of not supporting within us so that we don't. Not just that, to just make it even more hard for a person to get in a position to even receive support from his people. So to become an entrepreneur, plain and simple. So what people don't realize is when they have this hate, and when they don't support, when people walk around saying, I don't support black business, this and that, you are effectively destroying the black entrepreneurial spirit. Plain and simple. Forget the spirit, you, the reality. Plain and simple, you're killing it. And you're killing your own children's future of being an entrepreneur and yours as well. Because what happens is, when you have this emotion of hate, what you are basically ensuring is that, one you stay a slave because you don't have the feeling of being an entrepreneur and being your own boss you have an emotion that work is everything and i should keep working for this white man because if you didn't have that hate if you felt like you should support black businesses then you wouldn't feel that type of way you will understand that damn maybe someday i might want to open a business but by me walking around saying i don't support black business and me having this emotion of hate towards black business nobody's going to support my business so why should I take the time to open one when I'm not going to get the support? It's out there. And then people say, I only support the good black businesses. But you support the bad white businesses. As well as the good ones. As if there is no white bad business. So when people say that shit, I look at them like they're stupid. So there's no such thing as a bad white business. And it's crazy. So, you know, looking at what we do to each other. Uh, when it comes to business, you know, you can see why we are in the position and why you have few people have the urge and the spirit to go out and be entrepreneurs, to go out and make money. I made personal economics to try to help with that, to get people to understand that it's possible. But one of the things I said in the video, and it's sad to say it, is do not depend solely on black folks because you're not going to get the support. Sorry to say it, but it's the truth. So when I put up... Uh, couple weeks ago I think it was uh, talking about people you know complaining about the prices on the videos and I'm, I'm like you know I'm shocked by it because you don't have to buy the videos at all it's just not something that is like a, an electric bill that you have to buy you know so the price is what, what it is and it's due to me not being you know the white man and having you know production companies and being able to cut costs because I got 10 million people buying my stuff you know, if I got 10 million people, 10 million people buying, I could sell it for, you know, $2 <laughs> and be fine. That's not the case. Got people to pay, you know, not to, including the fact that one, a lot of people don't understand how long it takes to do this. You know, if you have ever edited video, then you get it. A lot of people look at the time of the video and think that's how long it takes you to make the video when you can look it up for yourself. I mean, to edit one hour of film if you're putting in pictures and and doing color correction or what have you it takes hours so it takes me a day you know 24 hours to finish one of these dvds you know then not to mention the time to record it and then what people don't understand another thing is i have to specifically pick out pictures that's not copyright because uh, all i was almost sued i had to go through this whole thing with somebody who was trying to sue me over a picture i was using so I have to make sure that I can use the picture. If I want to use the picture and it's copyrighted, I got to get permission. I got to wait on that. It's, it's I'm serious. I'm serious. Which is one of the reasons why when I start putting them on YouTube, they just start taking them down. And then now it's like they, they try to uh, monitor what I put out and then skim through my videos to try to find something to sue me over. It seems. But it's painstaking. It's a lot of work. And if you put in that kind of work on something for somebody to look at you and say, it's not worth forty dollars. Let you put in a day of work. You go to work for eight hours, and let somebody tell you your eight hours of work is not worth forty bucks. When I put in twenty-four hours and some change, almost two days. Not to mention, 
you know, designing the covers and getting it ready and everything like that. Not to mention all that. And you let somebody tell you it's not worth 40 bucks, $29.99. I mean, it's crazy. So this is, this is what I'm talking about. You know, uh, there's so many things out here we can look at and say, cost too much. <laughs> But people are not going to go and write the CEO of that company and say, your product costs that cost too much. It's a lot of stuff that we've had that we've seen that we couldn't afford or thought was too much. We didn't go and write the CEO of the company or the manufacturer and say, hey, this is too much. Nigga shit. They only do it when black people do it. People in the comment section. So this is what I mean when I say the emotion of hate. The emotion of not wanting to support your own people. For a person to take the time to go up to go in the comment section and say something negative. And it's like, okay, at the end of the day, what am I doing wrong? What, what did I do? I tried to sell something. So I'm hated because I tried to sell something. <laughs> Think about that. I mean, it's crazy. It's, this is what we go through. You know, oh, it's, it's take it too long for it to come. Give me my money back. The kind of emails I get from people, you know, you would think a person who bought your stuff is supporting you. But then when something is too long or too late, the type of email you get is like, well, damn, you know, what's, you know, it's crazy. It's crazy. But this is this is the brainwashing. I'm, I'm, I'm conscious enough to understand, you know, I get it. I understand what's happening to people. I understand why they react that way. I understand what has been done to us to cause us to have these feelings. So to me, I can look back and say, okay, they on some nigga shit. They on some white man training stuff. And it is what it is. So I try to respond accordingly and try to reassure people the problem is going to be fine. These are the type of things you have to deal with, you know, being an entrepreneur. And this is one of the reasons why a lot of people are afraid to do it. And it's sad that people are scared to deal with their own people. Uh, when it comes to business, but this is the type of stuff that happens. And uh, again, you know, you have a lot of issues and problems with some black businesses because one, you are used to dealing with white companies and buying from the white man that can afford to be efficient and afford to be on point. And they're not always, but they can afford to be in and uh, afford to make stuff at a low price. You know, if you Walmart and you got, you know, 6,000 stores, I mean, you can afford to make stuff low because you have millions of people, hundreds of millions of people buying from your stores. You get the cut. You make en enough money. So it's not a problem to put stuff on sale and have rollbacks and stuff like that. We all can't do that. So people trying to put us in this seat, the same seat as the white man when it comes to business, when well, we're not equipped to do that. But if we had more support, then we can do that. So. We talk about things getting better in the black with black businesses. We can only see that if more people support black business. It's just that simple. But that emotion and feeling that they created is you don't want to see another black person shit on you. You don't want to make a black person rich because you think he's just trying to play you and shit on you. And it's crazy. You are destroying your children's future and your own future and dooming yourself to be forever an employee of some white man. So when we keep you know saying I don't support black business. We have created that atmosphere, plain and simple. We have created it, and it's here, and it's out there, and it exists now, and it is what it is. And everybody got their own unique story of how some black business did something crazy as to the reason why they'll never again support a black business. I mean, this is ridiculous, as if white people have never done this. Black folks, we get the hammer from our own people. And I keep hearing all the excuses and everything. It's, you can't justify that. That's some shit the white man created within you that you don't know how to control yet. Just that simple. But, you know, the solution to that problem and looking at, you know, the whole situation and saying, hey, how are we going to get these people in power? Don't we need to vote? What can we do? That's it. Until we get economically strong enough to support a real, true black politician, uh, nothing's going to happen. And then you got to think about that whole point and, you know, almost every single black politician we put in power turns on us. And then you got to look at the fact that even if we do get a black politician in office, do you think he's actually going to be allowed to do anything that's going to help black people out? So next that, as I said before, the number one, the number one thing that you can do to assure progress as a people is to have business. It's universal because plain and simple, they can't touch 
or fuck with the fact that people fuck with you. Plain and simple. So to put it like this, you can hate me all you want. You can say whatever you want about me, but you can't stop those 100,000 people from buying my stuff. They want it, they're going to come get it. If you kill me, my kid will take over. Plain and simple, my family will take over the business. We're still going to sell. You can't stop that. You can't stop it. So if you have the product, if you have the business, if you have the people supporting you, it's nothing nobody can do about that. 